Last time we visited Belfast and got eaten alive by Mozzies and Castine. And we also visited a Fort Knox at Bucksport, but there was no money. And there was only one bar open in the whole town. We are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietro. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Feel the spray of the waves on my face. Atlantic Indian Ocean Blue. Whoa, land in sight to starboard. Got me home from where I roam. We are, say, we are saying goodbye for Backsport and also Fort Knox over there. And the Narrows, the Knobscott Narrows Bridge. So we are now on our way to a new place. There's no restaurants open, no bars open, <laughs> just as one place quite far away. And we are on our way now. So this is the Penobscot. Penobscot River, so we're going down this river and ooh, come on, Ray Marine down, down, down and then there's another X marks the spot that we want to go to so in the bigger picture, this is where we are, quite far up north uh, there's Florida, here is all our Bahama, Bahama. Anchorages. Yo. Such a tricky thing. Oh, there you can see some Maine is there. So we are now basically in the middle of Maine. And we're going to pass this bridge and underneath this bridge again. And the next stop was Bucks Harbor, another of many cute and quaint little towns all along the coastline of Maine. Our next anchorage. Filter vibration <laughs> after we snagged a pot, and this was the vibration. It's a, it's a rope. So I had to dive in this yucky and cold water, and yep, it's out. We're here at Harbor, Bucks Harbor, Maine. And apparently the town is closed, so we need to... <laughs> even this place is closing. So let's see if we can find some life somewhere. Danger, five miles an hour. And what is the danger? And I think this is about the whole town. <laughs> we reached the end of the town. And we found the restaurant and you need to reserve 
but we have we have a shortcut. We 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 found something nice. We normally have to sit at the bar. Yeah. So if you sit at the bar, you don't need to do any reservations. Look, it's pretty pretty place. This was quite a lovely place. A little bit expensive. But very good. Definitely fine dining. So we're back here at the marina. I actually, but this is the marina, right? Yeah. That's all the marina. Yeah. Very cute place. I think this might be few. In the middle of May. <laughs> I think they only use it for the summertime, I think. Showers. We wake up this morning to this. <laughs> this is those wooden sloops. One of them, there's two of them somewhere there. And there must be hundreds of boats here. We are back here in Stunnington and it's, oh, maybe you cannot see it, but it's low tide. The water is way, way down low. But this is Stunnington and over there is the bar lady that was so kind enough to, her name is Kim, kind enough to give her a dress so that we can send my drone parts. Yep, as you, I'm not sure you already seen it, but I crashed the drone, and it is. <laughs> I broke the not just the propellers, but I also broke the the gimbal, so we had to order a lot of parts. The only problem lying here, as you can see in the background, is all the lobster boats that are coming through here, and. They make they make quite a wake. Um, but yeah, so we are here. So tomorrow I'm going to collect the the parts. Hopefully we can get our drone to fly again. <laughs> it's going to be a whole rebuild, and then we're going to start heading that way into the sunset again. Um, and then I think somewhere there we're going to start going south again. But at this height of the, this, at the way that we are now here, this northern latitude, we still need to go west before we can go south. And then it's back to the Caribbean, a little bit warmer. Warmer country. Uh, we also got some chicken wings for tonight. So we're going to have some chicken wings and check this things. This and this, here it is. That is waking up as it wakes us up in the morning. The sun is about to come up. It's early, early morning. You can see everywhere there's lobster boats coming out. It's still too dark to see a lot, but they wake you up 
around 4 o'clock. From 4 o'clock in the morning, these guys are up and about. And we are this morning also up and about. And Pietro is right. And Pietro is busy here with some stuffies. Look at this. And there's even stuff in here. Fat cook and mince. <laughs> Fat cook and mince. South African. They, they actually, if you translate it, they call it fat cakes. But it's bread that you fry with curry mince. So, <coughs> I think we are late, and but the stuff is packed. Come out, come out. Yeah, cameras. It's in this kind of fridge. Okay, so this is very mm. important. I'm going to put it on the bags. So we're on our way on a lobster boat. Yeah, where are we going? And we're concerned, we don't know where we're going to do our ablutions on the boat. <laughs> but I don't think I have a head on the boat. I mean, it's okay, but um, luckily there's going to be another lady on the boat. So, I'll have to take note what she does. So, I'm going to learn by the, by the professionals. Back to work. Time is money. Let's go. grow grass on them so we got to cook them occasionally boil them up throw them in a tank of hot water the water is heated by the coolant out of the motor so we follow a lot of regulations to keep the population sustainable uh, one of many things that we do is we notch the tails of the breeding females you can see this is an egger she's a female lobster currently full of eggs it's estimated there's roughly 10,000 eggs per pound of lobster. So this is like a, close to a two pound lobster, pound and a half. So she's got around 15,000 eggs on her. And not all the females can produce eggs. So it's important that we keep track of the ones that do. And to keep track of them, we notch their tails. This way, if she's caught down the road when she doesn't have eggs, the fishermen know that she's a breeder and she can't be kept. Like on a farm, you don't want to harvest your breeders. So this is a way of ensuring that they stay in the ocean and keep the population sustainable. This is one that doesn't have eggs that somebody has notched in the past. So even though she doesn't have eggs, we still can't keep her. The target species for the day are these bad Bama Jammers right here. Small lobster, about a pound and a half. These are the best eating lobsters on the planet. Recently shed, you can see the claws are real orange. On a hard shell, they're real black. The meat's not nearly as sweet. These are the best eating lobsters. This is what we're after. We ain't getting paid nothing for them, but we're out here anyway, grinding away. Just to give you a quick sense of how many punch tails we get, I'm gonna haul this trap up. We haven't hauled it yet, we haven't seen what's in it. Just to give you a sense of what an unopened trap looks like, and sometimes we catch tons and tons of punch tails, sometimes we're not catching quite as many. Right now we're not getting quite as many punch tails, uh, but there are times where we catch over a thousand punch tails in a day. So we got some Jonah crabs. We don't have much of a market for these, so we just let them go. There's one punch tail. Two punch tails, three, <laughs> four. Well, said we're not catching many, but this whole trap was punch tails. I promise you that was not staged. What was that? Like seven, seven punch tails. There's a keeper. Maybe a keeper. Maybe a keeper. Another punch tail. Like eight, nine punch tails out of that trap. That is a lot. That, they're not all. They don't all have eight or nine, but there's tons of punch tails. 
in the ocean. It's basically created a big farm out here. We're letting the, the breeders go. We're feeding them the bait out of the traps. So the shorts and the breeders and the oversized, we can't keep the oversized too. So they all get to climb in the traps and eat for free. Goes up its back, full of eggs. I ain't got a white one yet. And it's a bunch tail. We just caught probably the coolest lobster I've ever caught. <laughs> Big old buck. So you heard me talking about the oversized also being protected earlier. Here's a good example of one. This is a big lobster. This is about as big as we can catch. This is about as big as we'll fit in our traps because their heads are too small. We have a measure. We measure from the eye socket down to the back of the shell. And if it stays up on the back, you can see that one is clearly way oversized. Then they're protected. These are the best at breeding. Once they get over five inches, you know, they're prime, prime breeders over five inches. It's estimated that they're roughly seven years old to a pound. So it's pretty mind blowing to think about it. This lobster is probably 10-ish 10, 10 pounds. So 70 years old, maybe 80 years old. Oh, so I think he's legal. The measure doesn't stay up on the back, so it's legal to keep. That's close to as big as we're allowed to keep. About a four pounder, what's the price? Around 350, so like 15 bucks. So we just finished up, we're headed in. We're cleaning the boat up. We got a little ride in. Okay, that was Stonington. Pretty area, lots of islands. So we wanted to go out on a lobster boat today and then today the engine decided not to start. So we are on our way to Camden. We're going to have a cup of tea while we go because it's still bloody early. Very early, but no wind. <laughs> it would have been a perfect day for lobster, but there's absolutely no wind. So that's why we're on engine. Uh, just look at that, absolutely calm, dead calm, you can see all the lobster traps, so pots. We anchored here in Camden. This is not really an official anchor spot, but there's a couple of mooring balls. And there's a lot of lobster pots around us, so I think it's not, not bad. But it's not protected, because you, the wind is coming straight from that side. So I guess we need to check the weather as well. But for tonight and tomorrow, the weather is good. So the Camden Harbour is just inside there. So we've got a race with that old schooner to the dinghy dog. <laughs> so this is Camden, apparently very picturesque. Lots of old houses, big old houses. Hello, hello the field dog. Yes, sir. Ah, the number one's coming in. Uh, number two, it's on its way. So they have all these pontoons floating here. Yeah, so you can come and dock here, obviously at a fee. Forty-five dollars for a mooring. For a mooring ball. Yeah. So these are going to be a Much little bit more. more. But Sisu cannot fit no, here. No, we won't fit in here. Well, we could, but then there's not going to be space for the boats to pass us. <laughs> wow. We are this is for 40 foot boats, not for 45. Oh. We are 5 feet too long. The Apple Door charges 60 bucks for a 2 hour trip. And 70 for a sundowner, which is also 2 hours. I think the people are waiting for the mist to clear so that they can go. It's 
found the dinghy dock. Oh, geez, do we have to park on top of the pontoon? So it looks like we'll pick up a cleat here somewhere. I do see a brewing company. Oh, American, bo oh, American boat house, maybe. No, 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 no. Brew house, boat house. <laughs> We're not going to a boat yet. So we spotted Sea Dog Pub. I think it's a brew. They're on our railway. Railway and they fix. I wanted her to go first, but she wanted to take a video. Yeah. Hmm. There is a restaurant area. And I guess this is, this is the dude. This is Lobster World, remember. <laughs> Now this is real grapes. Look at that. This is a pretty nice bar and restaurant. And I like I like these wooden things. And check this out. There's even a real, real, real sunflower. And real, 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 real strawberries. Look at this. It is actually a strawberry. It's a couple of them. Oh, and then back to Sisu for a spectacular sunset after an awesome day out. That's it for this week guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go do so right now. And please don't forget that thumbs up button. See you all next week. Mm -hmm.